Hello guys and welcome back to another For Honor Heroes build video with your boy Daniel Does It. I really hope you guys have been enjoying these videos. Thank you so much for your comments, your likes, your support. I really do appreciate it so much. Right now we're working on Zan Hu and the mode we're focused around is Breach Defense. Let's go ahead and get into the three perk selection as always. And what we have here is this time since we're defending I went with Devour because we are trying to get those executions. Now the first two segments in Breach right now currently have response. Now when they update Breach the last segment is where it's going to really matter to execute these heroes but regardless you still want to execute the enemy team because it prevents them from responding quicker than usual. They have a penalty added onto them for their respawn. Also this paired up with Headhunter makes you kind of like get two benefits from executing one you get 15 percent I mean not 15 percent but you get 15 more health than a normally amount of the execution you perform now remember quick executions give you a significant amount of health longer executions give you a, a greater amount of health recovery plus that plus 15 so just keep in mind you're not just getting 15 health from execution you're getting whatever amount you get from your executions plus 15 this it's another incentive to give you headhunter because hey the other bonus from executing heroes is up to a maximum of four times the first four heroes you execute will give you four plus to your maximum health passively till the game ends which in other words is 16 health added to your normal amount of health bar now the other feat that we paired these two perks up with I mean feet my bad perk we paired these up with is endurance now for those of you that don't know how this work a renown level is a feat so you know how Sun Zan Hu has Nikubai, which is the one that gives you stamina when you hit players or anything with an attack. That's renown level three. That's feet level three. So at that point, you'll have a nine percent stamina cost reduction because, as you can see, gaining a renown level receives three percent stamina cost reduction to a maximum of four gains, not four percent, but four gains. So you have three times four, which is twelve percent. So you'll have this passively throughout the whole game. You don't need to do anything to lock it. So it'll be like 3% for your first feat, 6% for your second feat. If you have three feats activated, you'll have a 9% stamina cost reduction and 12% at the fourth feat. Alrighty, let's go ahead and head over to the feats we have here. Now for this one, I kind of went a different route. A more, mm, it's not so punishing to use feats that kind of help you take out the team when it comes to breach defense because you don't have a respawn counter that's preventing you guys from either losing, winning or coming back to life. On the other hand, the attackers have to do their best to push through the first two gates and conserve their health on the ram and their respawn count when they get to the third segment coming up with the new update this Thursday. So. I went with Bounty Hunter, which allows you to not have to keep running to the heal zone whenever you kill a hero, or you get some health taken away from you when you're in a fight. At least it gives you more of a chance to get there even if you don't have a full health recovery. On top of that, with your Devourer, you should be okay. In Geki situations, when you can't execute a player, you're still going to gain health from killing a player not necessarily you have to execute them if you're in a good situation you take one out then you're aiming for the next one you're going to gain some health from taking that one out and zon Hu, in my opinion has been awesome with this because if i'm fighting more than one player my zone attack with this character literally does a 360 around you or a 180 and it literally wipes out anybody in that segment if they try to dodge away it catches them i love it i end up getting health so much and it, i don't know what it is but i feel like they increase the amount of health you've gotten from this skill or feat it used to be like a bar or so. Now it's like two bars of health that you get from this feed. It's awesome. And I chose that over Fast Recovery and Fairy Tusk because we're not using anything that's really going to help us with fire. We're in a big map, so a lot of the fire skills that Zan Hu has are, can be avoided or you're usually undercover from a building, etc. Fast Recovery. Now, I usually don't go with Nukubai, but because we have Endurance... I feel like we already have enough to where we don't have to really use a feat to help conserve our stamina. We're going to regenerate stamina faster with this, but in my opinion, 
I, I really do fine without it. I've played this build. It's been fun. Bounty Hunter. You get stamina when you kill somebody and you get health. I mean, there's no other way to go in my opinion than to go this way to keep you out of these dinky situations that Breach and Dominion usually keep you in. Moving on to the second feat, we have Winner's Advantage. I chose this over Thick Skin and Quill and Rust. Now again, the Fire Trap. It's a wide area to fight in for Breach. People are usually just going to avoid this. It's not going to go too well for a greater damage against troops so it's just in my opinion not better than the other two feats that you can go with in this mode now instead of trying to stay alive and have damage reduction every three seconds i went ahead and went with doing more damage after every successful attack and it's not just like oh you hit once your second attack does better damage it's like if you do a light zone and a heavier light the zone and the heavier light is going to have an extra attack buff because the way Winner Advantage works is you're going to see it flashing and it's activated and it's going to go down. Once it goes down, it's not activated again. It doesn't have a cooldown. It's basically just active and not active. If you don't, if you hit somebody in a guard, it doesn't count. You have to land a hit successfully, as it says, to gain a temporary attack buff. Now this, again, in my opinion, is going to help you in those kicky situations. And even in 1v1, it's going to work wonderful for you. Go ahead down to the third feet. I actually went with longbow just to kind of switch it up because Nikki boy, yeah, it keeps you in the fight. It makes you get stamina per hit. It's not so bad, but we're aiming to just take down the players and a lot of things like I said like yeah, there's a lot of troops on the field and if you use this right you can use this to prevent players on the opposite team from activating their revenge when they're in about a certain amount of mouth, I mean, mouth, health, and you're assuming, oh man, if I hit him a little bit or another teammate's gonna come, he's gonna get revenge. Or you run up on somebody fighting somebody who's kind of struggling, and they have about two bars of health, shoot them with this bow. I guarantee you it'll lay them out, and they'll probably be like, wow, 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 because they're mad that they didn't get to kill the other player that they were about to kill, and or they didn't get a chance to pop revenge. You just basically shut it down. Um. When it comes to breach defense, you want to prevent the players from capturing the zones, pushing their ram, so you're not going to be sitting there at the ram the whole time fighting these troops like you would probably with the breach attack one with Nikubai as I proposed. So that's why I kind of went with longbow. Again, fiery breath, you're only going to gain damage from burning targets and we already have winner's advantage so that way you don't need to have this feat activated. Now, Winner's Advantage and this feat, you do a great amount of damage, but we don't have anything that's throwing our players on fire. So just go ahead and go to the Longbow, shut down those people who are about to get revenge, uh, help your player teammates out. If you need help fighting the Guardian, shoot them with a bow as well. I mean, it really works wonderful when you're going against teams that are trying to gank or somebody who's getting ganked and you're running up on them and you're assuming they're going to get revenge and they have about two to three life bars left, shoot them with the Longbow, it's usually a guaranteed kill. On top of that, you can save your other teammates. If they're losing, but they almost have the teammates dead, you can run up to them and bam. Or if you're fighting turtles, that's the one thing I really do love, like like Conqueror, for instance, or Lawbringers. You're getting hits in, but they're punishing you more than you're getting hits in because they're just waiting for your attack. So go ahead and let them. Let them. As soon as they think they got the advantage and you have them halfway down, shoot them with the bow. I guarantee you, you'll get some more wow, wow, wows. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's go ahead and go over to the fourth feet. Again, instead of going with regenerate, where we heal ourselves, since we have bounty hunter and we don't really have a punishment for dying, I just went ahead with last laugh because if the enemy team is trying to push through and their response count or they happen to eventually take you down, at least you still have a chance. To punish them especially if you're getting a geeky situation and you're starting to win but they keep coming you know how that happens it's like a continuous wave of teammates coming at you when you're trying to kill one person so you end up just fighting continuously continuously when they finally do take you down if they don't execute you then you're gonna get the last laugh <laughs> going over to Drenere, i didn't choose it for the reason why i just explained and then scorching deluge i didn't use because again some areas were in cover, some areas were not. Um, it's not so bad. I love how they made it actually focus down on any players that are around you in the area and it gives them their own little circle of damage, but this can affect your teammates and it can affect your commander, which you don't want to do. 
I really hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, just keep a lookout for how you aim that longbow. Make sure nobody's paying attention to you. You can catch turtles off the guard with it and help teammates out. I really hope you guys enjoy. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Oh!